If you received a 1099-C, so cancellation of debt income, or you're expecting to receive cancellation of debt income, then this video is for you. I'm Jasmine DeLucci. I'm a tax attorney, CPA, and enrolled agent. And um, as a disclaimer, as always, this is for educational purposes only. I do this to help, but not uh, to be sued. So what I want to dive in today is something that I was asked about recently by a potential client. Um, and this is something that gets a little bit technical, but it's so crucial. You could save so much money if you know what you're doing and if you qualify in this area. So first off, what is a 1099-C? And like, did you even get it properly, right? So this typically happens when the most common scenario is going to be you have a credit card debt um, and then you negotiate and then it gets settled for less than what you actually owed. Of course, the credit card company or whoever the, the person, the company is, it's not going to tell you, hey, by the way, this is going to be income. Well, here I am telling you, hey, by the way, this is going to be income. So that's the standard position. Um, if you don't have to pay it and it was debt, then it is now income. And that's what's going to happen is, for example, credit card debt is forgiven. Then you will get a 1099C basically saying, hey, you know, the IRS now knows that you received uh, phantom income is like what we call it. Like it's ghost income because you didn't literally get the money, but by not having to pay it back, it is a form of economic benefit that is considered taxable income. So that's the default. And that's why you've gotten this form. Now there's a few things to consider. If it's from a large credit card company, it's probably correctly issued. Not always, probably. Um, what we, the first thing I'll see as a mistake is actually sometimes if it's not a large company, if it's like a smaller company or just like an individual employer, like sometimes people will inaccurately give these forms. So that's the first question you should be asking yourself is, was this even sent to me accurately? Like just because it was sent by a third party doesn't mean it's correct. Um, so for example, one general rule that excludes a lot of debts is think about like if you hire an attorney. An attorney, you have to pay. Let's assume you stiff them. You don't give the attorney uh, the money that they were due. That is something that that attorney then cannot turn around and issue you a 1099-C. And that's going to be the most common situation where I see just people do it totally inaccurately, whether it's an attorney or it's any, any service provider, anybody that was like going to, you were going to pay in that type of capacity, like a vendor customer capacity. The rule, the high level rule is that basically if it was going to be income for the person who you would have paid and it would have been a deduction for you, that's the type of relationship you look out for. In those situations, that's not the type of debt that is cancellation of debt income, right? When we're thinking of cancellation of debt, it's more of that true loan format, right? So like a, a true third party debt, and that's where you think of credit card debt, right? That's what it is. So when that gets forgiven, that is what a 1099-C is meant for, and that is what should then be considered income. And so I've got this pulled up on the screen where it's very simple form. It's very similar to like a 1099-NEC. It's just slightly labeled differently. And then this another common situation where I'll see these improperly issued is cancellation of debt income on the wrong form. So maybe it's on a 1099-NEC. So what we're truly looking for is is, is a cancellation of debt income, like that true economic substance. If it's mis, uh, like put on the wrong form, then the IRS still would consider it like true cancellation of debt income if it's following the, the statute. So that's the first thing we're looking for. Do we really have cancellation of debt income? Because what's great about cancellation of debt income is that it operates under different rules. And sometimes this can be really favorable for you. So like I said, the default taxation is going to be it's taxable. And that's basically what it is. Now, the very large exception is if you're insolvent. And this is going to be the one that it wouldn't necessarily be like common sense unless you talk to someone in the tax profession. So this is the form that we go to. It's form 982. And whether it's you prepping your return or even if you're hiring someone, don't assume that the preparer knows about this or knows whether you qualify. Um, this is something you want to be looking out for. So what it is, is it is, there's basically several different scenarios. You can even go to the instructions page, right? But you see them here. These are the scenarios. Like you, you basically have to, um, you have to qualify under one of these scenarios to then exclude the 1099C uh, from taxable income. 
So it still needs to be on your return. Always put it on your return. But then this form is basically going to say, okay, yes, this was income, but because I qualify under X, Y, or Z, based on this form, um, I'm going to, it, it's not going to be taxable. Okay, so some of the more default common sense ones would be like if you filed certain types of bankruptcy, um, but the one that most people qualify for because um, is going to be that you're considered insolvent. So discharge of indebtedness to the extent insolvent. So the to keep I always try to keep these videos simple. So to keep this simple, insolvent is essentially comparing what are my assets and what are my liabilities, right? Um, and and it's going to say if I have more liabilities than I have assets, typically you're insolvent and then it's not just whether you're insolvent, so it's not a threshold question, it's also a question of by how much am I insolvent? And you'll notice here how it said discharge to the, to the extent insolvent. So if you're insolvent only by 20,000, but you have 300,000 of uh, cancellation of debt income, then it'll only be that 20,000 that's written off and you'll still have to, you'll only exclude 20 of the 300. So that's what that looks like in this form going through it is essentially proving like, hey, I'm insolvent. <laughs> so that's the biggest exclusion. Um, honestly, this is a little bit of a secret, uh, especially if you're prepping your own return on TurboTax or, or um, even if you're working with certain preparers that just have a lot of returns and aren't, you're not in clear communication with them about your situation or you're not aware of this exclusion. If you just provide a 1099C to your preparer, a lot of times they're just slapping it on the return and calling it a day. And if you're in a situation where the 1099-C wasn't even properly issued to you, this goes back to every type of 1099 that you receive. You always want to include it on the return, and then it's probably going to have some type of offset or disclosure that wouldn't necessarily involve this, this form. This form is true cancellation of debt income, and we qualify for the exclusion under the code section. Um, if it's a 1099-C that was totally improperly issued, then that would be a separate type of offset and, and disclosure to say, hey, this isn't accurate. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, whenever you get those 1099C forms, I mean, you don't wanna pay tax unless you absolutely have to. So this is the first thing I would go to. And you can also go to the instructions page for this form to see is there any way that I can remove this as taxable income.